Terry came in at 6 a.m. and told us to go home and see you tomorrow. When we got out of the warehouse, the sun had risen, but it was cold and we could see our breath and the dust on our boots. Dad drove us both home. We were tired and didn't speak much. I cracked open a beer in the kitchen and listened to Sheila and Vinnie waking up next door before I headed off to bed. I woke five hours later with a dry mouth and desperate for a piss. In the kitchen, Joe was frying an egg. He had Lucy with him. She was slobbering on the floor in anticipation, but she wouldn't be getting any. I told Sheila I'd walk Lucy. He up for a stroll. This one goes at one mile an hour. He looked down at the bulldog and she flicked her roomy eyes at him. Maybe she thought it was cute. I said I, I would go. We hadn't walked a dog since Toby Jug died. It was a fine day, only drizzling a little. We walked up and over Albert Road Street, then climbed a fence into the field at the end of Howarth Cross's football pitches. Lucy squirmed under, just about. She was a rotund little beast. The grass was long in the field until the bank of the canal, where it had been cut back from the slope. We made our way to the first bridge, a stone arch for a single lane road linking Belfield to Hamer. Lucy sat down close by the path and wouldn't budge, so we all took a breather. A solitary magpie landed on the bridge. That's too bad, quick, do you see another one, Dad said. I told him I saw one just fly off even though I hadn't, otherwise he might fret for the rest of the day. A couple of ducks waited for us to throw some bread, but we hadn't brought any, and anyway, it's probably bad for them. <laughs> we used to go catching water hens in Ireland, me and Maxie. They're pretty slow, easy to trap, Dad said. He was always catching something when he was a kid. When we were sat right now, this canal turn had shown us how to catch perch a few years ago, just using a plastic bottle. We caught about five and took them home and put them in an old goldfish tank we still had. They all died within the week and Dad said we should have eaten them before they did. Anyway, <laughs> he yapped on about his childhood adventures. One day, me and Maxie, we did a bunk from school to check our hen trap down by the river. It was about a mile downstream from the town centre. We got near the edge, in amongst all the reeds and rushes, and there was this big white thing floating further out but snagged on a low branch. It gave me a really peculiar feeling. It was like I already knew what it was, but even though I knew, I still had to go through with it and check and see up close with my own eyes. So Maxie held on to me and I waded in a bit, and sure enough, it was her. Her? I asked. Well, I forgot to say, but... I just knew in the back of my mind what everyone had been talking about on our street. It was this sad lady who had gone missing a few days before. I don't know why she was sad. It's just what all the mothers said. Sad old Mrs. Reardon, like that. Only she wasn't old. But I knew in the back of my mind it was her before I even got to her. She must have jumped off the bridge in town. I don't know why. She was all white and blue and her face was a real mess. Bug eyes and an open mouth and buck teeth. She was half naked too. I can still see her, I mean, I stared for a long time. What did you do? Well, we got out there and headed back in town and telephoned the police from a call box and then we went and hid in the cinema to watch some cartoons. Jeez. Only thing was, the school told the guard that we hadn't shown up that day and they always check the cinema. So whilst we sat there trying to keep our heads down, the lights came on and this officer calls out our full names when we were caught. He marched us home. Oh, how many lashes did you get for that, I asked. Not exactly 40, but it hurt. We were talk of the town, though. Sad old Mrs. Reardon. You never found out what it was all about, I asked. People didn't talk about stuff like that with the kids. We had to make mad stories up then. Nobody knows what the truth is. She was upset enough to do that, that's all I know. Lucy, the bulldog, rolled over onto her back, showing a white belly and her nipples. I remember walking Toby Jug by the brook, I said. He loved to go in the water. Yeah, he was a holy terrier, always after water rats. They were voles, Dad. Toby Jug and Release Mink are the reason voles are on the decline. Smart ass, he said. Well, he'd shake them to death before I could get them out of his mouth. Anyway, once he was standing in the water, snuffling about, but he was standing on something. It was black and white. I thought it was a cushion that someone had dumped because it was squishy, you know, but when I got to it, I realised it was a spaniel. And when I looked up, I saw there was a rope swing on the tree. And when I looked down again, there was rope around the dead dog's neck. That's awful. I know who did it to. You remember that gang of lads, lads from Foxholes? How would I know what you kids get up to? When was this? I was 11, I said. There you go. I don't even remember where I was then. Well, it was that lot. I had a fight with one of them. Fat lad who scratched. 
Did you win, Dad asked. No, I never do. Joe managed to coax Lucy into moving again with promises of a stop-off at the entrance alarms. Joe would be going to meet his muckerero and Lucy was partial to a lick of bitter beer and maybe a few pork scratchings. I went home for another hour in bed. Thank you. <laughs>